One of the most exciting things for a curator, um, after going around the world and looking at all these things and getting them here, is getting them out of the box. Uh, and I thought I knew these pictures quite well. Um, but getting them out, laying them down to inspect them with a good light, uh, you find things you had no idea about. You find texture of the paint, you find different kinds of paint. They're quite different than I'd often thought. My ploy of making it decade by decade, I think, really paid off. I think people who are very familiar with Bacon retrospectives uh, are seeing things for the first time they hadn't seen before. There's never been a major show in Australia before, so we really needed this to be something that was, I think, quite all-encompassing. We weren't looking to do something that gave you a sense of one aspect of his work. We wanted it to be a full picture. You've done a plan and you know what the rooms are going to look like, more or less. Um, but sometimes you get them out of the box and start putting them around the wall and you just want to group them slightly differently. Um, you realise that these five works, they actually make a beautiful sort of set, a suite of images which speak to each other. They're quite poetic. It becomes almost like one experience and um, I didn't expect that. You can look at Bacon books as much as you like you won't see the textures, you won't see all the different ways of applying the paint, you won't feel the visceral presence of them. And the whole point of Bacon paintings is to create this kind of visceral presence that impacts on the sensibilities of the viewer. And that's such a huge theme for this show in particular and I think for Tony's way of collecting the idea of really spending time with an object that you can't understand this thing unless you see it in the flesh which is why it's so important to have a show like this in Australia. It's about bringing out these objects and giving everyone an opportunity to stand there with the object as though it's a being. It's very different seeing them in the flesh. And the great thing about the show is that Bacon always had everything put under glass. So, I mean, with a lot of exhibitions, you get within a metre of the thing and the guards shout at you. With this one, people could come up really close and inspect the works because it's quite safe to do so and I hope people do just that. The images are so iconic and so powerful and the darkness of them really reaches out to you. It's one of the first things that hits you. You really, really have to spend time in front of the actual work and just let go of that sense of horror and resistance to the horror to see that they are also about life life and death and love and sex and loss. It's all there. And you can see that in the paintings because the content is, is heavy and it's dark and it's the stuff of nightmares, but it's also painted with a sense of joy sometimes. There's something in the distortion that horrifies people, but there's also something in, in the way he's handled the paintbrush and the way that he's folded the gestures in, or the, that kind of color where suddenly it just sings this huge vibrancy. It's very, very joyous. It's very much about the enjoyment of paint and of his medium. With great artists, people want to know what the legacy of the artist is. A legacy in the sense of people being excited about what he did, but also what he said. Because in the end, through all the champagne bubbles, there's a philosopher speaking to us because he really did think about the nature of being, about the nature of chaos and control, about consciousness and unconsciousness, um, the nature of representation itself, actually, what it is to represent something, which is not to illustrate it, but to try and capture its emanation, he said. So all of those thoughts, I think, are very powerful, and that's true of any great artist, I think, that they're trying to do those kinds of things. What I really hope that happens when people come in and look at the exhibition is, first of all, if they're still clinging to the idea of illustration, that painting's about making a picture of something, uh, they will change their mind about that. Um, and they will discover that painting figures can be a great deal more than likeness, uh, that it can be 
paint as flesh, not paint trying to look like flesh, paint in some way creating a sensation in you that brings back the idea of flesh. I hope they will take away that it's the most complex painting they've ever seen and that they'll agree with me, even if they don't like the images, that this is the greatest painter of the 20th century.